shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you this morning. There's a river running and it never will run dry. Lord, rain. Lord, rain. The floodgates are open never will run dry lord rain lord rain say there's a river running lord rain the plug is your own bed opportunity to shout out to God with the voice of triumph, amen. Hey. Release your people, Lord. Release your power. Sing your glory, oh Lord. Come to praise him this morning. Have you come to worship him this morning? Hey, yeah. Hallelujah! Jump and dance. Worship you this morning. Hallelujah.
morning. Can we jump this morning? Hey, come on. Have you come to praise him this morning? Can we give the Lord a fine praise Hallelujah. this morning? Hey. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can we just love on him this morning? Can we worship him this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you. Light the fire in the night, like the ocean parting wide, like the grave empty inside. You will see me still the miracle, miracle.
miracles, 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 miracles. Hallelujah, Jesus, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Lift your voice and give God a shout. Everybody all over the building, lift your voice and shout. Shout, shout, shout. You came expecting a miracle. Shout with every fiber of your being. Shout with every ounce of energy and strength. If you believe this is your divine appointment for the extraordinary, lift up a praise right now that paralyzes the kingdom of darkness. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody, praise him. Turn around, tell somebody, I came expecting a miracle. Tell somebody on the other side, bigger, better, greater. Tell somebody, bigger, better, greater. Miracles are on the way to your life. If you believe tonight, everything this morning, everything you've been expecting, you are about to experience, I want you to take 30 seconds and praise him like you've never praised him in all your days. Come on, come on. Slap somebody a high five and tell them, welcome to your divine appointment for the extraordinary. Now clap your hands and give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. That's the best you can do? That's poor, pitiful, and pathetic. I said, is that the best praise you can do? Somebody throw your head back, your hands high, and scream. My God, I feel miracles in the building. I said, I feel miracles in the building. Uh, I just want to make sure the mic's working. Welcome to your divine appointment. I believe, you may be seated for a moment. You won't be seated long, I promise you that. I believe today that whatever you're expecting, you are about to experience. If you believe today that everything that's been held up and hindered is about to be released, I want you to shout at can't less with anybody in your old face. You better get out of the way, devil. We're coming through. You better open up your mouth and shout. Some of you need to move. You're sitting next to a non-praiser and they're blocking your blessing. But when the praises go up, Pastor, something is about. Tell somebody, SOS, slide over some. Cause my miracle's too big for you to sit where you are right now. I wish everybody would leap up and scream like you know. Slap somebody a high five and tell them God is accelerating you. Tell them God is expediting. I feel like preaching and I'm not the preacher. Tell somebody God is expediting and accelerating your breakthrough. Now if you believe revival is about to hit your house and sweep every member of your family into the kingdom. If you believe we're about to see signs and wonders and miracles, I want you to open up your mouth one more time and scream if you believe there are miracles being... I feel a release here. I feel a release here. I feel a release here. Everybody lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. We're not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. In this church, the Holy Ghost has preeminence. In your church, the smoke machine has preeminence. But preachers, we need to get back to the moving of the Holy Ghost. It's not form. It's not tradition. It's power from on high. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Why are you looking at me? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody from the back to the front, from the center of the sanctuary to its circumference, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray loud. 
I want you to know, aggravate everybody in your row. Pray in the Holy Ghost. There's about to be a divine visitation. There's about to be a divine disturbance. Yeah, revival's on the way. Yeah, your family's about to be saved. That rebellious spirit is about to be broken off your son. It's about to be broken off your daughter. Your body's about to be healed. Your family's about to be saved. Your finances is about to increase. The blessing of the Lord is about to fall like rain in your life. Pray, 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 pray. Pastor's getting ready to come. Pray. If you want what you never had before, pray. If you want to receive what you never received before, pray. Pray. John, I hear a sound of abundance of rain. Lift your hands and pray for 30 more seconds. I bind the works of the devil. I break every restriction. I rebuke every spirit that will try to limit the power of God. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Religious spirits, we drive you out now by the Holy Ghost. Revival's on the way. It's here now. I said revival is now. Revival is now. Revival is now. Somebody pray until it's not you praying, but it's the Holy Ghost praying through you. Now slap somebody a high five and tell them today, not tomorrow, tell them right now, every battle is suddenly, dramatically, instantly turning in your favor. Now throw your hands up and scream like you were at the Yankee game. For those of you that are here for the first time, raise your hand. Let's celebrate everyone that is standing in this place. We welcome you. I'm Pastor Kevin McGinnis. Welcome to Jesus as Lord Church. This is the place where souls the one mercy is extended and where miracles happen. Tell somebody you're one word away from a miracle. Yeah, one word can transform your life. One word can revolutionize your situation. One word can release healing into your body. One word can bring a breakthrough to your finances. Somebody shout, one word changes everything. How many of you believe today that every battle is turning in your favor? And you are about to see a divine reversal. And everything that's been held up and hindered is on the way to your life today. How many of you really believe today is that day? How many of you believe today is that day? We are honored and we are blessed to have with us one of the most prolific, profound, prophetic preachers of the gospel somebody shout the gospel some of you preachers watching me around the world you better get back to the gospel you better get back to what you came from the moving of the holy ghost and the fire that used to fall in your services tradition religion will not satisfy you complacency and apathy has paralyzed you but god is releasing revival i said god is releasing revival how many of you believe by the end of this month every family member will be saved and by Christmas you will celebrate the greatest miracle the salvation of your house shall yes shall yes today we got a lot of great preachers but not people living with their preaching the way my father raised me my mother raised me R. W. Shambach raised me Shambach said to me when I was in my early 20s, he said, son, if you can't live the gospel or demonstrate it, you're not fit to preach it. Just because you preach it 
doesn't mean you're living it. Today we're more interested in entertainment than we are souls that are perishing. But I, be I believe there's a revival about to ensue in America. I said, I believe there's a wave of revival getting ready to hit Long Island. I believe there's revival on the way to your family. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Open up your mouth because every revival is preceded by a sound. Lift your voice in the Holy Ghost for 60 more seconds. In the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Ghost. Lift your voice. Lift it loud, lift it high. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. So that's what I love about Pastor Parson. I've been around him a little as a young man as I traveled with R.W. Schambach. Go to his great church. Great miracle signs and wonders. How many of you are glad Pastor Rod Parsley is here today? Let's thank God for him and his team. Pastor Rod, on behalf of my family, this church, the next generation of preachers, thank you for never lowering God's standard to accommodate those that refuse to raise theirs. We love you, we respect you, and we will honor you always. I want everyone now to stand if you're not standing, and I wanna draw your attention to the screens for this introduction. Dr. Rod Parsley is the founder and senior pastor of World Harvest Church, a thriving multi-campus church headquartered in Columbus, Ohio. He is an international speaker, a frequent guest on numerous media outlets, and the host of a daily television broadcast, Breakthrough, viewed by millions worldwide. He also hosts a monthly live broadcast on the Word Network, Breakthrough Live. Rod Parsley is the author of more than 70 books, including New York Times bestseller, Culturally Incorrect, and his most recent, The Finale, One World, One Ruler, One Reign. He is the founder of various ministries, including Valor Christian College, Bridge of Hope Ministries, and City Harvest Network. The roles closest to his heart are that of husband to his wife, Joni, and father to their adult children, Ashton and Austin. Without further ado, Jesus is Lord Church, will you please welcome Pastor Rod Parsley. Thank you, Pastor McGinnis, First Lady, tremendous congregation of Jesus is Lord. I am more than honored to have the opportunity to be with you today. Um, God, God has blessed me beyond compare. I am overwhelmingly thankful today. I, I am walking mm, in a new garment that has nothing to do with this suit of clothing they hang on. I have had the privilege of preaching this gospel for 40 years now, 40, 42 years to be exact, 42 years, full time, and my daddy used to say, before, there we go, before, hello, before he went to be with the Lord, my daddy used to say, it's a good thing the boy can do some preaching because he sure enough can do nothing else my dad my dad was a man's man he believed in dirty fingernails and he worked with his hands 
and he taught me to love to work and then he handed me over to my heavenly father and his word to me was go and I've been going ever that's going to happen just give me something else RD they're doing a thing with the FCC okay they're doing a thing Ooh, this one feels more anointed anyway uh, just just whoever this is just just bring me back up there where I was thank you thank you a preacher has two friends that's a little too much a preacher has two fr friends that's why I talk a little bit at the beginning a preacher has two friends the Holy Ghost and an anointed sound engineer that's that's <laughs> anyway, I have, oh, you almost there. Anyway, I have been privileged to preach this gospel for 42 years, 150 nights a year outside the 14 ministries that God has blessed me to be in leadership over including World Harvest Church and Valor Christian College and Harvest Preparatory School and, and uh, the women's clinics that are saving on average three babies a day 365 days a year from the horror of the American Holocaust called abortion I'm just seeing who I got I'm trying to find the saved folk. Maybe they over here. I'm trying to find the, I'm on my way to heaven and I know it, folk. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody made the decision that you're not going to be silent no more. Now, in a minute, I'm going to need you to shout. Right now, you're just playing at it. Right now, you're just shouting out of your head. But in a minute, you're going to shabak. You're going to shout from some place of another world just coming through you. Throw your hands up and say, make me a vessel. Make me a vessel this morning. This is my time for my thing from my God and I refuse to be refused and I deny to be denied. This is it, my time, and I'm not leaving without it. Shout now. I asked folk, I asked folk to shout uh, because uh, after all of that preaching, and after all of those books and after apostolically giving birth to all those ministries and churches, incidentally, City Harvest Network was born one year ago, July. One year ago, July. Before that, I had started four churches. But when I turned 60, God the Holy Ghost got a hold of me. And he shared some things with my spirit. I have a prophetic word for you. Just came up in my belly. Anytime I say that, shout. Yeah. We have to. Hey! We have to learn. Yeah, he's here right now. Praise him now. He's here right now. Praise him now. He's here right now. Praise him now. You two come here. 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 It shall not be as it was in the former days, says the Lord, for I am about to put a right now anointing on you that cancels your past and opens your future. Don't bring anything with you. Just reach out for what I've already sent you. It's all, now wait a minute. 
Now wait a minute, I feel my help coming. Everybody sit down. You stay there. Everybody sit down. Hey! Sorry. I'm subject to bursts of enthusiasm. What kind of job do you work? I'm a cook in a nursing home. At a nursing home? Are you ready to earn, to own a nursing home? Well, are you not? Heck yeah. Are you ready? Do you know him? That's your? My brother. Your brother. What do you do? I'm a nurse. You're a nurse. Get up. Get up. Get up. Stand over here. You're about to be given an opportunity. It's an opportunity that has its birthing in a place of discomfort for you. There's something about your job that's been uncomfortable to you and it gets on your nerves. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Well, get ready because whoever that is, you're about to have their job. Okay, come here. No, don't you patty cake. This is not Frozen. This is not a Broadway play. This Holy Ghost Church. And if you need a Red Bull, go drink one. Otherwise, get in touch with a power from another world. Get on your feet and go to shouting. All right, be seated. Be seated. Now, I don't know. You have to understand there are different kinds of prophecy. There are two major, folks are afraid to look at me right now. That are... Why, you don't want to have your boss's job? Everybody that wants to have your boss's job, stand up. Are they in the kingdom? Is your boss in the kingdom? Are they in the, ki is your boss in the kingdom of God? you're not sure then they ain't if you're unsure if your boss your husband your nephew your cousin your aunt your uncle if you're unsure whether or not they're in the kingdom of God they're not because you tell kingdom people I can pick some of you out right now you tell kingdom people Kingdom people talk about a resurrection while they hanging on a cross. Kingdom people know the front seat is reserved for them, even though they've been told to get to the back of the bus. I, I need somebody who wants to raise your hands and tell the devil, my daddy owned the bus line. I sit where I please. What's your name, mother? What's your name? Dorothy Martin. Dorothy. 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 There ain't no place like home. And your home is about to become a paradise of miracles, signs, and wonders. You got family that don't know Jesus but God is about to give you such a miracle that they're going to look at you and say, I got to, got to, got to, got to, I got to have it. Shout now. Don't be a spectator. Shove your neighbor and say, I'm not going to be a spectator. Not this morning. I didn't come to see a show. I didn't come to a play. I, this ain't Broadway. And I'm not an actor. Let me introduce myself to you. It's been 18 years since I've been on Long Island. I got a feeling it's not going to be another 18 before I come back. I, I feel something up in here. I feel a rumbling in the mulberry bushes. I feel something quaking just under my feet. 
I feel a Holy Ghost salvation, healing and deliverance move of God about to hit this island like a wave in the ocean. Let me introduce myself to you. It may have been a while since I've seen y'all. I had a building over here right after 9-11. 6,000 people packed it out. I preached a message called The Empire Strikes Back. That was prophetic for now. Sometimes God put a word out. It take a long time for that word to come. Hey! For that word to come to its destiny fulfilled. That's what God, I heard you, Holy Ghost. That's what got Jesus up from the dead. Shove your neighbor and say, he's about to say a thing right now, right now, right now. He about to listen up now. Listen up. He about to say something. He about to say something. We about to get a word up in here right now. You can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. Huh? Sorry. Dance. Dance. There's a dancing spirit. Now shout, now clap, now wave, now spin, now leap, now shout again. Now, now. Now you see, you could have a lot of preachers up in here. Y'all have a lot of preachers. About half of them get up in here in an atmosphere like this and they lost as a goose in a snowstorm. Cause they know how to preach a sermon but they can't find the wind of the Holy Ghost. All you need to be a preacher is a sermon. But if you're going to be a Holy Ghost firebrand man of God, you better find you an altar and you better grab hold the Holy Ghost. Thank him for the Holy Ghost right now. If you speak in that language, speak in it now. Let all your neighbors know the greater one lives on the inside of you. Here's what God, Jesus, if I break anything, I pay for it. I got money. I didn't come looking for money. I give away more money every year than I make. You figure it out. Now that's awful good over there. Y'all don't shout right over here. I move back over there. I stay over there by mother. 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 Here you go. So what? What? Got Jesus up from the dead. So you can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. And quit, quit waiting on some doubly dead, plucked up by the roots, hireling, six-foot icicle somewhere. I'm not talking about here. If you get up there and moan and groan and mess about and drop you on a little bit of regurgitated, get you a word for yourself. And then you go in the strength of that meat for 40 days. You didn't hear a word I said. 
Listen to me now. Listen to me now. So what got Jesus up from the dead? You're supposed to have resurrection power in you. I said, you're supposed to have resurrection power in you. You got the Holy Ghost, throw your hands up and shout. Shout till you get tired of shouting. It is for David, way yonder back in the first covenant, David said concerning Jesus, it is not possible that death should hold him, nor will you suffer your darling to see corruption. Corruption began for the dead in Palestine on the fourth day. After they buried by Jewish tradition, that's the reason the women came on the third day to anoint the body with spices. Not the first day, but the third day they're bringing that stuff to anoint him with 15 gallons of oil. I don't know why Christians today think a little dab of do you? Do you know, do you know, do you know, you know, you know uh, Ted Shuttlesworth? What if you do shout? Ted Shuttlesworth. He's a buddy of mine. We like collard greens and fried green tomatoes and stuff like that you don't know from nothing about that on long island listen he came i was diagnosed with cancer i could show you pictures of it cancer vocal cord cancer the doctor looked at mr silent no more and said we don't know that you will ever take a microphone and a Bible again. Well, it's easy for you to say no now. But I needed some folks stand with me then. And Brother Shuttlesworth showed up. He got that Shambach anointing like your pastor. Thank God for your pastor. I'm glad we're doing this on a Sunday morning. I believe it was God's plan for me to be here on a Sunday morning. I only do this three times a year. I pick three places where I'll be on Sunday morning other than that pulpit in Columbus. And there's one of them. Here's why. I know, I don't believe, I know God has a word for us. And we don't need to be distracted by those folk drifting in from some half-dead church. Don't look at me funny. I come in here on a Thursday night or something, they all come from other churches and all that kind of stuff. Let them stay in their mess this morning. We got the right folk up in here. I thought I heard somebody pray. I thought I heard somebody give him praise. So Brother Shuttlesworth, Brother Shuttlesworth, he said, I come preach for you. I said, come on. And uh, I believe it was a week after I got that diagnosis, that word that strikes fear in the heart of mortal men, cancer.
he showed up and he said, he said, I'm on, he had a big bottle of oil. He said, I'm going to anoint you with this. And I grabbed a bottle and drank it. Some of you need another drink. Somebody need to take another dip and come on up shouting. Take a dip. 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 Now shout. It was that word waiting in the supernatural atmosphere for its appointed time. Somebody about to get a word in your appointed time. Somebody about to get a word been waiting on you to get right here. Take a step Throw up your hands and shout, I'm getting it today. Get your own praise. Stop, organ. Get your own praise. He's not going to be there on Tuesday. Now, God gave me a word. Almost 18 years ago. Sit down a minute. If I got your seat, find another one. I need a handkerchief. Here. Now, you get out of the Holy Ghost, I'll make you stand up again. Sitting, sitting is a contented posture. Where you sit, you intend to stay. Tweet that. You believe you're going to grab a hold of something today that ain't going to let you go. I'm going somewhere. I said, I'm going somewhere. All right now. So I came up in here. I came up in here almost 18 years ago. You know, your Bible said, write the vision, put it on tables so that he that readeth it may run. David said concerning Jesus, it is not possible. Those words went out into the atmosphere and they waited. For the vision is for an appointed time. Isaiah said he was wounded for your transgressions. Uh, he was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was laid upon him and with and by his stripes you were and therefore are healed. 
But now wait a minute. That was Isaiah. That was Isaiah. Hallelujah. Isaiah said that. Amen. Nobody got it on tape. Nobody tweeted it. There wasn't no video evidence. Just somebody wrote down those words. Not only in earth, but they were recorded on high. And then in 2015, when Dr. At what's that Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, looked at me and said, Dr. Parsley, we don't know how to tell you this, but what we thought were just polyps on your vocal cords from strain is cancer. Squamous cell carcinoma. All of a sudden, from somewhere, Isaiah's words heard the doctor's words and said, it's my time. Now I've been waiting and anticipating. I've been expecting it. And God will not deny me. Do you have a word that hadn't manifested just yet? <laughs> but you know you shall have it, shall now. Be seated. Why does he make us shout? You ever get laid flat on your back with blood running out of your mouth? You ever get fourth degree burns inside your throat, outside your neck, and your flesh hanging around you like ribbons? And you lay in there and can't make a sound. I don't have to get nobody to coax me, prod me, encourage me to shout. I shout because I can. Some of you need to wave because you can, dance because you can, spin because you can, clap because you can. I be seated. You know the best dance. The best praise is that one all by yourself when you couldn't care less who's around you. I don't, uh, I don't preach long. I just get interrupted a lot. Be 
Be seated. Be seated. Hey! So. So. There are words out there. Jesus said. Jesus said. My words are. Spirit and life. My words are spirit and life. Proverbs 4.20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. For they are life to you. And health to all your flesh. The word health is actually the word medicine. God said, my words are medicine to your flesh. God, the Holy Ghost told me that. And he said to me, people on blood pressure medicine, which I'm not, but God will heal your blood pressure right now. If you need it, just stand up. God to heal you. If you receive it right now, your doctor will tell you, we don't know what's going on. We're going to have to adjust your medication. Take it. Take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Now shout, I'm healed. Be seated. Hang with me now. Hang with me now. Hang with me now. Uh, uh. You're a preacher. Yes. Uh, raise your left hand. I don't prophesy to people. That's the lowest rank in prophecy. The lowest rank in prophecy is... To have the God kind of faith, which is available to every believer. The God kind of faith. Faith comes five ways. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Secondly, faith comes by impartation. That means it's tangible. It is tangible. Can I see your purse? It's tangible, right? And if you have it, you can give it to me. You just did. Because it's not only tangible, it's transferable. That means you get around somebody with it, it'll get on you. The spirit of faith is in the atmosphere of this house jump up on your feet and take a dip in it be seated this yours this yours get ready you got at least a thousand dollar miracle coming huh I said, you got at least a thousand dollar miracle coming. No, you're not listening to me. You have at least a thousand dollar miracle coming. Huh? Oh, yeah. I receive it. In I receive it in Jesus' name. Lift your hands up and thank God for it. Now, see, I'm teaching you something right now. I know this because when I took hold of her purse, God told me to give her a thousand dollars. 
I didn't come to get. I came to give. I'll get later. You need a thousand dollars. You need a thousand dollars. Pastor, is she all right? Do, do you know her? You don't know her. Okay, if she's a flake, that thousand dollars will be cursed. I'm here under your authority. I'm tired of people coming into my church and prophesying my worship team out of my church. You devil, shut your mouth. You, are you under my authority, you in my place? I wish preachers had learned something. They go prophesying, oh God is going to make you this, that, and other. And I know the person they're talking to is a rank thief. See, so they don't look at me before they do that. I was in the service Friday night. I started to prophesy to a preacher on the front row. I looked over at the pastor, and the pastor dropped his head. That's a, and I never said a word to him. I just told him to sit back down. That's not my place. Let the voice of the prophets be subject to the prophets. And let me tell y'all another thing that Jesus is Lord. I am on television, which does not make me your pastor. I bought more television time than any preacher in the history of this nation. And that did not make me those people. This man, this woman, this woman, this family, they are the shepherds of your soul. Your future, God, I'm anointed in here today. Your future is wrapped up in his words. Sit down, I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you like Jesus taught. Jesus saw some lilies and said, consider the lilies of the field. Moses saw an eagle with its wings spread wide. And gave one of the greatest revelations of the dual nature of God ever given to mortal man. I just saw this lady's purse. Touch somebody and tell them, uh, it's in the bag. I'm about to run. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Be seated. I'm illustrating something to you. Here's what I'm illustrating to you. The elemental reform of prophecy is that which every believer can operate in. The God kind of faith that calleth those things that be not as though they are. That's where most prophetic unction operates, even in preachers. It should operate in all believers. But since the believers are so backslidden because the preachers don't preach nothing. Is it lunchtime or something? Because you've quit on me. Yes, sir. Every believer. See, you ought to be pulling these chairs up and throwing them across the room. I just told you, every believer can call those things that be not as though they are in the God kind of faith and possess whatsoever you say. So get to talking. Call your family saved. 
Call your children in the gospel. Call your husband in the ministry. Get the speaking. Call millions of dollars into this church. If you're a leader in this church and you're not praying every day for every bill to be paid and millions of dollars left over to preach the gospel, you're backslidden and you ought to resign. God didn't bring me back from the dead to play. You got some preacher with manicured fingernails and getting himself a pedicure to do that. You don't need me. But you want to get something on you the devil can't get off you? You need me. The second kind of prophecy is much different. This is the prophetic utterance of the seer. Of the seer. You see, when I told, stand up on him. Stand up. When I told this precious woman, when I told this precious woman that God was going to give her a thousand dollar miracle, I wasn't calling it into being. I already knew it because when I walked up to her and took her purse, God, the Holy Ghost set up in my spirit, give her a thousand dollars. All I did is tell her what I already knew. This is not calling those things that be not as though they are. This is seeing those things that are already there. And being the mouthpiece of God just to let you know it. That's how I prophesy. When I tell this man that God's going to put a seven times greater anointing in his left hand to heal the sick. Especially in regard to tumors. And your wife is going to have a supernatural anointing in regard to cancer and deliverance and deliverance i'm not telling you what i'm prophesying out there to come to pass i'm telling you what god the holy ghost already told me and he's not a man that he should lie seated precious lady will you pray for me by name every morning and every night for the next year every morning every night you will pray for me you will rebuke devils you will believe God for a seven times greater anointing on my life seven times oh you need to believe god for my airplane the devil stole my airplane when i was down with cancer airplane that i'd flown for 28 years and i think it's time he put it back all right hey Be seated. So, eight, 18 years ago, I was here on Long Island. Your former precious pastor, the apostle, now gone to be with Jesus, was the main support I had in being here. And I love him. To this day, he's watching right now. 
we are encompassed round about with so great a cloud of witnesses, the spirits of just men made perfect. They're shouting right now. Why don't you join them? Just stir yourself up. Be seated. <clears throat> now, pastor, under this seven times great anointing, most folk don't recognize my ministry. That it's just, it's just very, very different. There's a different cadence, uh, there's a different movement, there's a different sound. Man. Somebody tell me what year it is. It's not a trick question. It's 2018. It's 2000. See if this group over here gets it. It's 2000. God's a God of timing. He's a God of purpose, intention, plan, program, government. Not that crazy bunch in Washington. They don't know from nothing. None of them. They can't find their way to the door. My dad would say, they ain't got sand. They ain't got sense enough pound sand in a rat hole. You know why? Because it's all about them. Every one of them. It's all about them. It's not about us. I ain't going to say that. I'm going to move on. So this just hit me this morning, Pastor. When I had the joy of seeing you before service for just a minute. And you reminded me of that. I had forgotten completely about it. You know, 150 nights a year for 42 years, you stuff runs together. And when he said that, it was like the Holy Ghost just, 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 and said, I don't care what else you do or say today. But you say this in that place this morning. So faith comes how many ways? Uh, you are good. You are good. Five ways. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by impartation. It's tangible. It's transferable. If I have it, I can give it to you. That's how I operate in it. Because no anointing. Tweet this. No anointing ever leaves the earth. Brother Shambach's anointing did not leave this earth. It just changed residence. That's all. He saw him go up. I said, he saw him go up. This is the last place he preached. He saw him go up. So he gets a double... Weren't you shouting? Be seated. Faith comes by hearing, faith comes by impartation. You know, Paul said to Timothy, it was in your grandma. She left, it got in your mom. She left, now it's in you. And Paul said, you get a double portion because it's also in you now by the putting on of my hands. So he transferred. That's why you find a man or woman of God, you better stick tight. You better, you better be like Elisha. There he is. You going, pastor, you going to Long Island. I'm going with you. Everybody dance.
Just keep dancing. Now one good, thank you Jesus. Faith comes, faith comes. Now here's how I know a lot of folks that go to church and they're faithful in everything. Some of them ushers, some of them deacons, some of them preacher, some of them Sunday school workers, children's workers, youth workers. Some of them clean the building, but they're not saved. I'm just sorting the fish. Here's how I know they're not saved. Because God said, when you get born again, I didn't say when you made a decision. Problem with the modern church is we have decisions and not conversions. Nobody becoming a new creature. So what used to get dealt with at the altar when they got saved, so since we took the altar out of the church and everybody just making a decision, then counseling has replaced deliverance. Entertainment has replaced preaching. Let me introduce myself to you. I am not a life coach. I am not a bodybuilder. I am not your health source. I ain't selling vitamin beans. No protein shakes neither. I wish some so-called believers would spend half the time trying to get their spirit in shape. Some of these preachers So, so these, you used to have to talk about, to women about their clothing. You used to have to do that. That's the men. Preacher, if I ever see you on Facebook with your shirt off and your muscles flexed, or you run around preaching in some little skin tight t shirt. And flexing your bicep while you hold the microphone. I'm done with you. And you ought to be too. I ain't throwing down shots with you. Look at him. He don't know how to react. Sit down. Shove your neighbor. Tell him. Hold on. It's going to get worse. I can't preach this everywhere, but I ain't everywhere this morning. I'm right up in here. Jesus is Lord. You love me, don't you? I love you too. You look like you could cook. You cook? Yeah. Yeah. I come back, I'll come to your house. This is why, how I know whether or not you're really born again. Because the third way faith comes, God said, if you get truly born again he gives you the measure of faith stop 
the measure of faith for what? For anything you need as a newborn again child of God. And then he says, which of you being an earthly father, if his child asked him for bread, will you give him a stone? God is not a bait and switch God. God said ask. And you shall receive. Seek. And you shall find. Knock. And it shall be open to you. If there's been a door closed in your face, I dare you to knock right now. The bank said no is about to say yes. Your boss said no, he's about to say yes. The doctor said die, he's about to say live. I said this, I said this for the first time Friday night, Friday night, my wife had spoken to me and she said, she's very, very, very prophetic, very quiet, but when she says a thing, E.F. Hutton listens. She said, since you've been back under this seven times greater anointing, she said, there's a new anointing that has come on you, but you are being, you don't mean to, but you're being resistant to it. Your wife talked to you like that. I said, what is it? She said, now this is the first time I ever mentioned this was this past Friday night in some place in New Jersey and nobody should be. <laughs> I mean, you got to have the Holy Ghost go where I went, man. Razor wire all around the church. Yeah. Ooh, we had a time. He, and, and my wife said to me, she said, it's an R.W. Shambach anointing. I said, now wait a minute. Brother Shambach had me lay hands on a young boy blind from birth right here at my altar. He was 11 or 12 years old, had never even seen a light in front of his eyes. And he turned to me, watch this now. Come here, Rod. God's going to open this boy's eyes. Now lay your hands on him. Yeah. Open his eyes. That boy looked around. And God put perfect sight in both his eyes. And it's still there today. And that's over 15 years ago. I thought this was a shouting church. I thought I just told you. Your pastor today stepped into a double portion of that anointing. You better start bringing the blind in here. The deaf, the lame, cancer. Start having healing services. Just have healing services. All right, be seated. Now, that's not what my wife was talking about. I asked her about that. I said, you mean like that blindness? Anointed. She said, no. No, you're already walking in that. Which was true. I said, well, then what is it? 
Did anybody watch the fight last night? It's not a sin. I'm not talking about the one in your neighborhood. I'm... Anybody, what, what's that cat's name? McGregor. Huh? McGregor. Huh? No, he didn't. But she said, you know what you always say about Brother Shambach? I said, yes. She said, what you always tell young preachers about Brother Shambach? I said, I know what to tell them. She said, well, repeat it then. He, I said, when he took a platform, he knew this thing. I am R.W. Shambach, and you ain't. Walked in an unusual, apostolic, not angry, but apost joyful, apostolic anointing. And I thought about him last night when that McGregor cat, he's the cockiest little thing. He got his behind handed to him last night. He had to tap out. But when he go in that ring, That's what's on me. I don't fear nobody and nothing. I ain't got nobody to impress and nobody to entertain. I have an audience of one and he is well pleased. Now that's going to get all over you. Be seated. I didn't come up in here to preach my favorite on the road sermon to you. We got too many preachers with sermons and no spirit. This is a Holy Ghost church. This is always going to be a Holy Ghost church. This is a miracle, signs, wonders, healing, salvation, deliverance church. know where I am. Be seated. Is it quit time yet? So, so faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by impartation. Faith comes when you get born again. So like I know if you have faith or not, by whether or not you're one of these Christians that is a contributor or a consumer. Do you come in here to consume? Or do you come in here to contribute? Do you come with your own shout? If these, if these prolific the gifted communicating musicians were not here next Sunday. Would you lose your shout? Mm -hmm. Or would you come in with your own hallelujah? Would you come in with a testimony that's up to date? Let me tell you what it did for me this morning. Do you get up looking to run the devil off or hide from him? Be seated. Do you have faith? You say, well, I'm trying to get it. I'm, I'm getting in the word. No. No, 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 no. Faith that you need for everyday life, all, ah, all that applies to you, spirit, soul, and body, 
and everything that pertains to life and godliness is already in you if you're born again and you don't need anybody to lay hands on you for that. You don't need to get in the healing line for that. He's not supposed to be the only one with faith. You're supposed to come in here with faith. Be seated. And then faith comes two more ways. If you're taking notes. Faith comes two more ways. Number one, it comes by the gift of faith. Now that's what I have in my belly. Get in my belly. We do movie quotes, never mind. Uh, uh, I have that gift in me, you see. I have it from several different streams. I have it from the stream of the greatest faith teacher I ever knew in my life, which just two nights ago went to be with the Lord at 91 years of age. His name was Norval Hayes. I have it from my pastor, the late great Dr. Lester Summerall, who heard on the radio there was a girl possessed by a devil, a prostitute. She was in Bilibid Prison in Manila, the Philippines. The doctors and psychiatrists and psychologists and law enforcement of the entire nation had been observing her for weeks. They put her in a padded cell with only one door in and one door out. Suddenly, she would be just as normal as you sitting here and the next thing you know she would go into a rage she was but 14 years of age living on the streets of manila selling her body for food human beings do terrible things to each other and suddenly I borrowed you before, let me borrow you. Suddenly, on her back, not on her arms, on her back would appear teeth marks with blood streaming down from them. Now, there's nobody in that cell, just her and devils. My pastor walked into that cell with the cameras rolling, slapped a left hand on a right cheek and a right hand on the left cheek and shouted, get ready, I'm going to shout, come out of her! She went on the floor. The bites on her back healed. God gave her her right mind. The newspaper the next day read, the devil is dead. Brother Sumrall said, that's not very good theology, but it's pretty true. That young woman became one of the greatest evangelists in that nation. And Dr. Sumrall, as a result of that, received an airplane hanger from Dr. Oral Roberts in which he started a church after having a revival for 30 days in Manila Square given by the mayor free of charge and 150,000 adults plus children gave their lives to Christ and the second largest church in Asia is still there today. I have faith. 
I said, I have faith. It's in me. Glory to God. Be seated. I have other faith. When I stand before you this morning, afternoon, I do not stand before you as 61-year-old, 61 still having fun. I can still punch and kick. Rod Parsley from the deep dark hills of eastern Kentucky raised so far back in the mountains we had to pipe in sunshine. June bugs didn't show up till August. You understand? It was a long way back in that holler. No running water. It hadn't always been like this. Wear your shoes out of the holler. Your old shoes from last year. Put them in the cleft of the rock. Take out your school shoes. Put them on to walk on to school. Put your milk from the cow in a glass jar. Put a cork in it. Put it in a creek to keep it cold. That's not who's standing before you right now. The next time your pastor mounts this pulpit, he will not be who he was before today. Ah! And neither will you. Ah, oh, you lost your shout. Here we go. Here we go. Be seated. I'm getting ready to think about closing. Huh? Don't do that. I like you. Like I pay you to just travel and sit on the front row wherever I go. That's the way a front row ought to be. I told my front row last week. Every one of you don't sit on the front row no more. You don't shout right. You, you don't want to go to my church. I told one of the musicians not long ago, you fornicating, get off my platform. This anointing cost me something. You ain't messing with it. Be seated. So God, then the last way faith comes, faith comes by the fruit of faith. Fruit is not something that gets hung on a Christmas tree. Fruit is something naturally produced from the tree. So in other words, you should have faith for no other reason then the fruit of faith just flows out of your life. Y'all were shouting pretty good a while ago. but Now, I brought us to a point. We are now at what Andy Grove called, Andy Grove's second wealthiest computer mogul in the history of the world. Andy Grove, founder of the Intel Corporation. So every computer you ever turn on has got a little Intel thing on it. That's him. He gets money every time you look at it. Andy Grove wrote a book. In that book, he describes something called a strategic inflection point. What is that? That's a place where you come to not a dead end because a dead end has no outlet. But the road you're traveling dead ends into a crossroads, at which point a choice must be made. Because you can no longer go on. Jesus is Lord. Come on. Uh uh. Y'all prayed for me to get here, and here I am. And I'm bringing you 
to a point of no return. You cannot get back to where you were after you walk through these doors this morning. You can't get back there. I said you can't get back there. Look over your left shoulder. Look back over your right shoulder. Look back at me. Say that's the last time I look back. There ain't nothing back there. Your past cannot infiltrate your present and cancel your future. Everything changes today. I'm going to try again. Everything changes today. Everything changes today. So 18 years ago, how long? 18 years ago. What is this year? 2018. A transition which you are in because I have brought you there. You're going to have to go left or right. You can't come in here next Sunday like you came in today. That will not happen. Now, I don't know which way you're going. Because the thing about a strategic inflection point is, when you make that choice, it doesn't seem like a very big one. Right. But the issue with the strategic inflection point is the further you go, the further you get away from where you were. Satan wins every standoff. You in the valley of Elah with the Philistine giant breathing down your neck. You better get out your stone, David. Ain't got no time for lunch. Ain't got no time, child of armor. Get out there. The cold will get colder the hot will get hotter there will be not a lukewarm one among you here's what god said I would that you were hot or cold. Problem with the modern church? Ain't nobody saying it. Modern church thinks it's all about being, uh, what is it, Manny? And what is it? Being uh, huh? relevant. Relevant. They won't be relevant with their skinny jeans. Now look, I have nothing against skinny jeans. And when I lose about 40 pounds, I'm going to try me some. But some preachers ought to realize one size fit everybody except you. That ain't for you. Got a head as big as a bucket and little skinny jeans and no socks and pointy toes. You look like a fool. <laughs> Pastor, I came in this morning. I had on some tennis shoes and my world changer shirt and a jacket and my jeans. And he said, you going to preach like that? And I said, no, I brought my suit and tie for Jesus is Lord. <laughs> but let me, let me explain something to you. It wouldn't matter if I preached in a jogging suit. The anointing or the lack thereof do not depend on my clothes. Or whether you got a smoke machine or you got a TV screen 
or you got a nothing. You can build a church next door to hell if you got the oil. If you got the anointing. If you got the spirit. I'd rather be a part of a revolutionary church than a relevant one. A relevant church is simply, we don't even know what we're talking about. A relevant church means to be connected to the issue. So I say that to preachers that think they have relevant churches. Which what they mean by relevant is accommodating. If a homosexual is comfortable in your church, that's not a church. I didn't say you should make them uncomfortable. But there's something called the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that ought to be present to deliver. Can you look at me funny? I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of some radical Islam. Islo, Islamo-fascist. Either. You know how the seven churches of Asia Minor disappeared after 320 years? Islam destroyed every one of them. The marching armies of Muhammad destroyed the seven churches given birth to by the Apostle Paul, pastored by the apostles of God. You know why? Because they allowed the culture to dictate to the church rather than the church influencing the culture. To be relevant means to be connected to the issue. And the issue is very simple. The great commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. And the Great Commission. Go into all the world. Preach this gospel. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now when those words are recorded in the book of the Revelation. The Lord Jesus through his servant John was speaking to the church. He was not speaking to the world. He said to the church, I would that you were hot or cold. God would rather you be on a bar stool in Hoboken than to be in here and be lukewarm. See, they don't shout you down when you get there. No, they don't shout you down there. They want a gospel without a cross and a Christianity without sacrifice. Self-sacrifice is entry-level Christianity. I have two questions for you. Question number one, numero uno. What are we doing here? Why are we here? What's this all about? I ask preachers that all the time. They have no idea. What's this all about? Why do we need these chairs? Why do we need cameras? Why do I need my airplane back? Why do we need an organ? What are you doing here anyway? You could be in a club making a whole lot more money than you're making this morning. Why are you here, by the way? Why'd you get all dressed up and look so nice? Why are we all here? What's this all about? I said that in one church. I said, why are we all here? The fellow stood up in the back and he said, preacher, I perceive we're not all here. I, we're all here because we're not all there. That's good, right? That's good. That's funny. I don't care who you are. <laughs> so, why are we here? I'd like to preach an hour there.
When you invite me back, I will. But if you let my son, uh, Antonio Burroughs, he gets to come in here once a month. I get to come once in my life. That's why I'm going so long. He goes longer than me anyway. So, let me tell you why we're here. Why we need a youth group. Why do we give? Why do we shout? Why do we pray? What's this all about? One thing. We're all here. Watch this preacher. Because they're all not here. The apex of all Christian endeavor must become to place the jewel of a soul in the crown of your Savior so that the Lamb of God slain may receive the reward of his suffering. Why do we praise? Because your niece needs saved. Why do we pray? Because your husband is not yet in. Why do we give? Because there are over a million people on this island and less than 4% of them will attend a church service in the next year. Why are we here? Where's our go? Why did God give you that Beamer, that Mercedes, that Tesla? I was in a Tesla the other day. That's the craziest thing I ever saw in my life. It's a car that has no engine. It's just a computer. Fastest car on the open market today. Runs on batteries. Isn't that crazy? Anyway. So, we're here. Now watch this, because we're going to take our temperature for a minute. Be easy. Now, it won't hurt. We're going to take our temperature. Why is your family still lost? Why is your boss still unsaved? We live in a generation of the advocation of personal responsibility. It's somebody else's responsibility. I would that you were hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I will, I'm not going to say it graphically the way it translates, but just watch the illustration. I will spew you out of my mouth. What does that mean? It means lukewarm Christians make God sick. Now if you thought for one minute they said we are rich and have need of nothing. Sounds like the American church. There's a reason, Pastor, they're not kicking pews out of the way and diving headlong into altars anymore. It's this ungodly affluence. We got the best doctors. We got the best homes. We got the best automobiles. We got the best lawyers. We got preachers that are super powered and padded pews and crystal chandeliers. What need have we of God? So we become church goers rather than believers. Because when we get 120 full of the Holy Ghost, truly born again, we could win this island in 30 days. So why not? Why not? Why not? Be seated. That's why we're here. 
Secondly, what is revival? What is revival? Everybody prays for revival. You send us revival. Let me tell you what revival is not. Revival is not miracle signs and wonders. That's not revival. It's wonderful. And if you've got a preached word without confirmation to it, you don't have the gospel. And I, they brought me a young boy just born. He was four or five weeks old. He had hydrocephaly, hydroencephaly. His skull was bigger than his shoulders. He had a brain stem, but no cerebellum. His brain stem kept him breathing and his heart beating. That's it. Otherwise, no brain waves. No brain. The cavity of that large skull filled with water. Hydro, water, encephaly. They handed me that boy on a Wednesday night. Everybody was already going home. They caught me going out the back of the platform. They said, pray for our boy and God will heal him. I perceived faith in him. I laid my hands on him, prayed for him, turned around, walked away. Wasn't any different till the next day. And when he got up, his head was normal size. And ABC, NBC, and CBS all had to carry the story of the, of the imaging of his skull with no brain. And the next image, his skull normal size with a fully functioning brain where there had been water. Now that's great. That's great, pastor. But I'm a pastor, you know. I am an evangelist. I have an apostolic anointing. But, do you know how many people got born again as a result of that? None. Signs and wonders don't cause people to be born again. The convicting power of the Holy Spirit causes people to be born again. Now, you should be testifying about the great things that God does. That brings the crowd to hear the gospel. Through the foolishness of preaching. Glory. I have here, and this is my close. I have here a book. It's kind of old and tattered. Uh, it was my mother's book. She had two books beside her bed on a little nightstand like that. A Thompson King reference version chain reference bible king james version and this book that's all she didn't have a remote control she didn't have magazines just her bible and this book the forward was written by one of the greatest voices on prayer the world has ever known a.w tozer the book itself was written by one of my mentors, a Baptist like me. His name was Leonard Ravenhill. The book is called Why Revival Tarries. It was first published in 1959. My mother bought this copy in 1961. It has pages in it that she let me color. I'll not take time to show you. I keep it because I am at my core a revivalist. I live, breathe, eat, sleep for one reason. To see men and women come to Christ and truly be born again. In this book, the great Leonard Ravenhill in 1959 said the problem with the modern church, that was 1959, the problem with the modern church is that we have decisions without conversions. Said Ravenhill, I doubt that even 
of the people sitting in evangelical pews, which you are, on Sunday morning, I doubt that even 5% of them are truly born again. In the last six meetings that I've had, two-thirds of every person in the building, including preachers, choir members, deacons, elders, ushers, came to Christ to truly be born again. We have become professional churchgoers. What does that mean? That means we come in, we make a decision. Yes, I believe God has a wonderful plan for my life. And then we pray a little prayer and off they go. And then we start following up on it. I got born again when I was eight years of age. No one ever sent me a letter. No one sent me an email. No one knocked on my door. No one did anything. At eight years of age, I searched the Columbus newspaper for revival meetings and would ask my mom and dad to take me. Why? I got what the Bible said. I became a new creature. Everything passed away, Pastor. Everything became new. Nobody had to teach me. Stand up, bro. Stand up. Isn't this a... Man, I'm telling you. If I had this guy's stature, I could preach. <laughs> but look at him. You love me? Yes, sir. I've been following you a long time. You've been following me a long time. Well, I love you too. I left a voicemail on you. You left me a voicemail. Yes. Do you know what? I genuinely love him. Now, I don't care whether he a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent, or a nothing. I don't care. I love him. And you can't make me not love him. And you can't make me have to try to love him. Because I don't have to try to love him. And he doesn't have to try to love me. And we did not go to the racial reconciliation seminar. We became new creatures. Christ lives in us. So how Christ in him not going to love Christ in me? How Christ in me not going to love him? How's he going to not forgive me? Huh? For what my ancestors did. You forgive me? For what they did. They did horrible things. But I didn't do it. And I wouldn't do it. I'm a believer. So you can't hate me because I look like them. I didn't have nothing to do with it. My mama went to the delivery room. Whoop, there I was. I mean, I look like I'm white. Didn't have no choice. Neither did you. So celebrate what you are, who you are, but don't ever forget we are one. And don't let them divide us. That's good preaching. I don't care what church. People ask me all the time, aren't you tempted to drink? Preachers ask me. Tempted to drink? Yeah, well, you preach so hard, you wreck that hotel. Don't you want one of those little bottles of whiskey they got in the room? I said, no more than I want a big swig of gasoline. I don't. But yeah, but aren't you tempted? No. Temptation, when habitually kept at a distance, ceases to exist. Tweet that. Amen. I'm not tempted. Preachers say, oh, Pastor Rob. You know, I used to, I used to be young. I was preaching to crowds of 50,000 when I'm 22 years old. And they all talk about women waiting in the hotel lobby on them and so forth. And I say to them, I must be the God awful ugliest human being that ever lived. Because I ain't never had no woman chase me. Sometimes I would like feel bad about it, like God. 
that happens to you preacher so called because you give that off I love my wife we've been married how many years Hannah 32 years we've been married and I never had another thought about a woman but then I don't sit around my house and watch pornography after my wife goes to bed neither. Here's what I'm trying to say. I'm born again. I'm born again. That world has no allure for me. Once you've tasted the good things of God, once you've had a drink, from the Holy Ghost fountain once you've been cleansed by the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb that world is dead to you I don't want anything it's God except to use it for the gospel be seated said all that to say this three minutes and I'm done I believe I'm here prophetically, not pathetically, prophetically. I believe I'm here prophetically. Here's why. 18 years ago, I was here. Haven't been back here since then. Been around the world a hundred times, but never been back here. I preached that message, Pastor, called The Empire Strikes Back. After 9-11. Now I feel this. I have two purposes in the earth. After I became 60. Only two. Find young men like this. And pour everything that's inside me. Into them. For the next portion of my life. However long that may be. That's my purpose. Could I have found a place to preach today that would have many, many, many more people? Yes. But I didn't want to preach to them. I wanted to preach to you. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm not... Please understand why. The reason is because you are a remnant. You're not relevant, thank God, but you are revolutionary. When you were talking about souls, Pastor, at the beginning, God spoke to me. I believe he spoke to me. How many souls would you say were saved? At that meeting. A thousand souls. It look good in here with a thousand more. On fire people. On Sunday morning. I want to pray. Because there's a shift happening. Right now. I feel it. I felt it when I came in the building. There's a shift. How many of you have at least one family member that is in jeopardy of spending eternity in hell as we sit here this morning? Raise your hand. We could triple the size of this church from your family. What about all the other people? 4% of the people on this island will be in church in the next year one time. That's all churches of every kind. If every church on Long Island was filled to capacity this morning, 96% of the people that live here couldn't get in a church building. That's not an indictment. It's an encouragement. The reason you feel that it's an indictment is because you feel like they'll never be saved. And I'll show you they will. I'll show you they will. 
when the revival is when the church gets saved <laughs> really saved I'm not even talking about filled with the Holy Ghost I'm talking about really saved to the bone well on Saturday night you're laying out your clothes for Sunday morning and you can't sleep for the anticipation and the eagerness that you're going to be with the family of God. You're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders. You're going to worship God. You're... That's how you know if you're saved or not. So 18. 18, right? 18, 2018. It will soon be 18 years since I was here. Jesus was in the temple. And his mom and daddy lost him. Like, you know, lost him like at Coney Island. Is there still Coney Island? People lose their kids there, I bet. They lost Jesus in the temple. How old was he? He was 12. You never hear another word about Jesus for the next 18 years until he's strolling over a hill and John the Baptist says, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. I'd love to be the John the Baptist for this island. I'd love for them to have heard nothing from me for 18 years and allow me to come back and say, behold, the Lamb of God. I'd love to, I'd love to hold a soul winning crusade and win a thousand people to Jesus. I thought I had an agreeing church. Get on your feet and clap and praise him right now. Lift up your hands, everybody. Say, God, save me. Set me on fire. I repent of being lukewarm. Set me on fire. Forgive me. Wash me. Ignite me. Enthuse me. Encourage me. God, give us this island. Now praise him that you believe he heard you. Save our children. Save our family. Save us, God. Give us souls lest we die. Give us souls lest we die. Give us souls lest we die. Dance like you're going to dance when your family gets saved. Come on, give him praise. Start calling their name. Start calling their name. Betty shall be saved. Shania shall be saved. Daquan shall be saved. Jose shall be saved. Call their names. Okay, be seated. Everything's about to change forever. Okay, thank you for your enthusiasm. Everything's about to change forever. Everything's about to change forever. Everything's about to change forever. You're not coming back in here Sunday like you came in here today. Everybody just do this for me. Be seated. Put a finger up in the air. Put a finger up in the air. And just do this. One time. One time. 
Now say, turn around. My family, my marriage, my health, my hope, my joy, my peace, our church, our pastor, first lady. trying so hard to hurry. Can I have a drink of water? I'm trying right here, son. Yeah, anyone, it don't matter. Long as it's wet. So, uh, so, About to be a party around here. Let's get this party started. Your giant is about to fall. That's not the shouting part. And once he do, now I have an earned doctorate. I didn't buy it. We just, I understand what the proper English is. It just doesn't have as good an impact. I'll come and teach sometime what actually happens when you do that. Because unless you have the revelation of it, you don't understand. Music is not a prelude to preaching. If God could adjust their eyes, they could see music. It travels on the same electromagnetic wavelengths, sound as sight, as light. So when you play, light goes forth. Silence is the language of defeat. That boy, at McGregor, got his feathers plucked last night. He walked in there like this. And he walked out. He wasn't saying nothing. Why? He lost. Silence is the language of defeat. Shouting is the language of victory. My shouts changing. My praise is turning around. Whoa! All right. All right. Not only is your giant followed, there's only one reason for you to be in a valley. There's a giant there God assigned you to kill. And when you do, Watch me. He's never getting up again. This affliction shall not arise a second time. That's God's word. First things are important. What are y'all, singers? Jesus was at a party his first miracle first things are important was not done in the church service nor the synagogue it was done in a party a wedding cana of galilee i like that cana of galilee there were set there your bible said six how many how many Six water pots of stone. 
after the manner of the purifying of the Jews. And when they had well drank, both Jesus and his mother and his disciples were called to be at the wedding. And when they had run out of wine, Jesus, Mary, saith to Jesus, Lord, they have no wine. Now, you know Jesus was anointed because he looked at Mary, what brought him in the world, and said, woman. Now, look, I'm from eastern Kentucky, and we got what you call whooped. No, no, not like white people think about it. We got wood. My mom walked you through the house. One word and whack at a time. I told you. And I didn't ever call my mother woman. But Jesus did. He said, my time is not yet. And it wasn't. Her faith changed the trajectory of his ministry on earth. Because she said, whatever he says to you, he hadn't said he was going to say anything. Whatever he says to you, Nike didn't coin this. Just do it. So Jesus said, bring me those water pots. Fill them up to the brim. Six of them. Containing 30 gallons apiece. What's three times six? Oh, oh, 18. What's six times 30? 120. This. Is 360. That's a turnaround you don't want. Because you end up. But if you get 18 involved. I said if you get 18 involved. Then you don't get this. You get. this whatever way you were going you can't go that way no more whatever devil was fighting you falls and don't ever get up again watch me the miracle was not that the water was made wine the miracle was once it was made wine it never went back to water again that's a turnaround I'm telling you, that's a turnaround. Do you need a turnaround? Come on. Does this island need a turnaround? Does your family need a turnaround? Do your finances need a turnaround? Then shout now. Be seated. Now, I've already sold a thousand dollars, but I want somebody to sow for their family. How could you really sleep tonight if you saw your family on their way to hell and nothing to do about it? 
Nobody talks about eternity anymore. Nobody talks about heaven. Nobody talks about hell. It's always your, your best life now. He's a friend of mine. But I told him, I said, if this is my best life, that don't say much for heaven. I'm going to heaven, man. You need to turn around. And I'm believing God for every single person who is of a willing heart. That's not for me. Every single person who is of a willing heart to truly mark this moment as your turnaround. This is it. I'm never coming in here like I came. I'm never going to work like I went last week. I'm never praising like I've always prayed. No, something has turned around. You need a financial turnaround? God delivers with the power of a seed. So I'm going to encourage every one of you. Pastor didn't ask me to do this. I'm going to ask every one of you of a willing heart to sow a $180 seed for a turnaround. A $180 seed. You say, Pastor Rod, I can't. Probably you just won't. But I believe you will. And I'm going to add my faith to yours today. Now, Pastor, here's the way we're going to do this for me. I want you to get this precious lady's name whose purse I had. Are you with me? And I will work out with you how to get what I promised her to her. But I want it to come through you. See, I want some pastoral covering to it. But I want every, you say, Pastor, I, I don't know. I, I, if you're making a check, you make it payable to Jesus is Lord. That's a good way to make a check, man. Jesus is Lord over your money. You want God involved in your finances, get involved in kingdom finances. $180 seed. Pastor. It is a truth that I cannot sow $180. Get as close to it as you can. Sow 100. Sow 80. Under God, everybody ought to sow 18. If you can't sow 18, we're going to have to buy your lunch. Everybody participate. Every, there's power in agreement. I'm going to allow pastor to come and finish this out because he knows the protocol better than I do. The front row are just finding their checkbooks, so the back row is just getting started. Everybody get ready. If you need envelopes, evidently the ushers have them. They'll be glad to share one with you. Fill it out completely. I want to thank you for my express joy, honor, and privilege to have the opportunity to be with. Let me tell you one thing while you're making. Help me, Hannah. Who's her? Yeah. Huh? Pastor Manny's got it. All right. Come here, Pastor Manny. Yeah, I will. Valor Christian College is fully, regionally, nationally, and locally accredited. All of our credits transfer to every major university and college across America. However, our cost for your first two years is one third their cost. Plus, you get to spend time in the cave with giant killers. People like your pastor, myself, uh, let's see, T.D. Jakes and uh, Joyce Myers and Travis Green and and Tasha Cobbs. Tasha Cobbs and her husband are both students of Valor Christian College. And uh, they're on online studies, which we have on campus and online. So I would love for you to find out about it. And some of my kids came with me all the way from Columbus back there. And they're ready to give you information. And they've got those World Changer shirts on. Every time Antonio Burroughs does 
social media, he puts on a world changer shirt. And I say, everybody asks him, where do you get that? Well, you get it from Valor Christian College, the School of the Spirit, and you can get some today and take them home with you. I'd love to share about Valor Christian College with you. You spend time in the cave with giant killers, you come out different than when you went in. How many of you believe I'm healed? <laughs> it's kind of obvious, isn't it? Here are my words and God's words put together. I kept a journal during that three-year journey. I prayed my way through it every single morning and every single night, and for three years, I did that. It was between an hour and two hours each setting, morning and night. And I wrote my notes and my confessions and other scriptures and what I was believing, how I was believing, all through it. It was just a big loose leaf journal. It was personal to me. And my assistant got a hold of it, and she said, Pastor, I gave this to my husband who was dying with a cancerous tumor in his throat. And she said, we started going through that. He went back to the doctor. They cannot find the tumor. It was inoperable and it's gone. It's still gone. If you know somebody, if you know somebody that needs healing in their body, if they'll do this, I promise you God's word will heal them. That's physical. This is financial, soulish, mind, will, emotions, relationships. I did the same thing with this one. So you get both of those. And then I like to write books. Uh, I write them all the time. Uh, I wrote one on the cross because most Christians have no idea, no idea what the cross really did. They don't even know. You know, there are songs like three rusty nails and stuff like that. There were not three nails. Jesus was not crucified with his feet over top of each other. There's only one historical piece of evidence, archaeological, scientific evidence, that anyone was ever crucified in Palestine. One. I tell you what it was. I tell you what it reveals. If you want to know what the cross did for you, you need this book. And since I wrote about his crucifixion, I thought I better write about his resurrection. So I wrote, Gone, One Man, One Tomb, One Sunday. It's all about how you can have resurrection power in your life. And then since I wrote about his crucifixion and resurrection, I thought I better write one about his second coming and the rapture of the church. It's called the finale. One world, one ruler, one reign. Nobody preaches in time prophecy anymore. The church is ignorant of it. The book of Revelation is not a book of gloom and doom. It's the most powerfully exalting, rejoicing book in your Bible. And it's the easiest of the books to understand. I give you the keys to understand it. You'll go right through it and you will become an authority on the rapture and the second coming of Christ, which you need to be. So it's all half price. If you like good praise music, Lisa Brunson and Harvest Music Live recorded this CD. Uh, and my daughter wrote the title track called Powerful Grace. It's one of the mightiest songs you'll ever hear. And you can enjoy that. And it's half price too. So just enjoy it. And Pastor is coming to tell us how we are going to close out this powerful time together. Come on, stand on your feet, put your hands together and show Pastor Parsley how much you love him. Everybody standing. What a word. What an anointing. How many of you have been changed? Lift your hand high if you've been changed. I want you to come, everyone, clear every aisle, bring your seed. As you're sowing your seed, wrap faith and expectation around it. The proof of your love for God is found in your giving. Everyone should be coming with that seed. 
Your seed is unlocking your turnaround. I said your seed is unlocking your turnaround. I want to challenge every one of you before you leave. Go back there, find out more about Valor Christian College, the School of the Spirit. Also, as you're going back there, there is product back there as well. I want every one of you to hear me. Every one of you hear me for a moment. How many of you will vow today before God that you can continue daily to uphold Pastor Parsley before the Lord as you go before the throne room? Raise your hand. You're going to pray for him. Lift your hand. I want you to pray for him like you've never prayed for him. Stand with him like you've never stood with him before. How many of you know every one of us have been transformed today as a result of this life-changing word? Lift your hand if you've been changed. Now, we're not coming back tomorrow night the way we came in today. You heard the prophet of God that everything has changed. There's been a transformation. How many of you believe there's been a dramatic sudden change in your life? I want you, amen, as we come back tomorrow night, as we come to pray for people, we're praying on Miracle Monday. There is a, 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 a phone that we put on the pulpit and we do Facebook Live and people are literally calling Brother Hines from around the world. People that need miracles, people that need deliverance, people that are believing for family restoration and salvation. We'll pray for people live right here on Miracle Monday. If you've never tuned in, you need to tune in. I want to challenge you to help us take the gospel around the world. I want to thank every one of you that are partnering with me with Empower today. We love each and every one of you. Thank you for your partnership. Please do not leave without buying every product that is back there on the table. One more time, give God praise for the ministry, the apostolic ministry of prophet, pastor, evangelist, Rod Parsley. He'll be back with us again very soon. I promise you that. We're gearing up as well for great things that are upcoming. This coming Friday, I'm going to be with legendary Morris Cirillo in New York as well. Christine is going to come in a few moments with all of the announcements. There is no fellowship today in the back because me and Pastor Parsley are getting ready to do some promotions for the church and for Empower Today in our brand new HD studio. Support, amen. Support Pastor Parsley. Partner with his ministry. Partner with my ministry because together... We're changing the world one soul at a time. I challenge every one of you to be here tomorrow night, Thursday night, for our midweek empowered hour service, and then back again Sunday morning, 11 a.m. How many of you are bringing your family into the kingdom this year? That's what your seed is all about. Shout, my family will be saved. Shout it out, my loved ones will be delivered. Shout it out, my family will be saved. Shout it out, my loved ones will be delivered. By the end of this year, if you believe it, give them a mighty shout of praise in this house. Come on, open up your mouth and give God a praise in this place. Thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for sharing the word. Thank you for inviting souls to come. We love each and every one of you. Welcome Christina as she shares these announcements. We have so many exciting.